And welcome to the Klaus and Q Show. We are live from the ONTV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan. I'm Jason Klaus, along with Quad L. Edwards and Q. We've talked about this for a number of weeks now, a couple of months now. We are here. We are live. We do have members of a studio audience here with us live tonight. So this is a very, very exciting show. And I'm like, my nerves are on overdrive right now. <laughs> Yeah, so am I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, I mean, this is a great experience. We got a great audience here today. We have a great topic today. And uh, we're going to, you know, just go through the weeds and discuss them, man. Right. I, you know, we, you and I, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what it is that we, we are going to bring on the air here. Because, number one, we want to be entertaining. We want people to tune in. Because if you're not entertained, why are you tuning in? But we also want to talk about things that's going to resonate with people. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, and I've said this across all of my platforms, like there, we get so consumed with everything that's happening in the world around us that we lose base. You know, we lose our focus on the basics of life, the fundamentals of life, is what I call them. Um, with that, there's good and bad, right? I mean, you, right. because you cannot have. You know, a good day if you don't have bad days. You know, you have to have that compare and contrast. And and, and tonight we're going to tackle a topic that does, in fact, if, if you are a human being and you are breathing air and you've got blood running through your veins, this is something that at one point or another you have already or you will at some point encounter some sort of tragedy, right? Yes. Now... Generally, we try to keep things a little bit more upbeat, but at the same time, like there's a lot of things happening in the world around us right now. There's a lot of people that are going through a number of different, you know, situations and and scenarios that can be conjured up as nothing short of tragic. Right. I hate to put salt in the wound, but I mean, you are one of those people, you know, you yeah. and your wife who is here with us in, in the studio tonight. Front row. Yeah, not not to call you out or anything, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you guys are in the midst of recovering from not, you know a tragic situation. You got you guys lost your home, you lost your possessions. The important thing is is that everybody is healthy, and right. is safe. You know that's obviously the bottom line here. Yeah. So this resonates with you on that level. Yeah. Because there are so many you know, layers of tragedy, so many different versions of it, so many different scenarios that can be conjured up as tragic. Now, with that being said, and I know that you'll agree with me on this, it's all based on an individual. Because what I think is a tragic s situation may not resonate with somebody else right. to be a right. tragic s situation like... Um, and vice versa, so, something that they may be going through. I'm like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, and I don't say this out loud because I don't want them to think I'm, you know, kind of poo-pooing on, on their feelings or mm -hmm. their emotions because I certainly don't want to do that. But at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, like whether or not they have the right kind of spaghetti sauce at, at the Meyer is not that big of a deal, right? I don't think it is. <laughs> I mean, because... People get bent out of shape about this, right? Yeah, and I—I I mean, I, I view it as a, you know, a tragic situation is something that's personal. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you're going through, and people on the outside might not have that same understanding of what you're going through because it's—it's it's, it's not personal to them. You know, you might have, you know, uh, family members or people that's close to you that might be able to share a little bit of that situation, but. Really, nobody's going to feel it more than the person actually going through that tragedy. And for those who've been following my story, I was in the house fire just over a, over a month ago, and we lost everything. We actually went into the unit uh, last week and viewed the damages. Everything is gone. Mm. Everything is gone. Now, I see it as, you know, some people see the glass half full or the glass half empty. I see the glass as refillable. So, I mean, I know everything can be replaced, everything, everything can be replenished. The key is how do you react to those tragedies? Now, I can see things and just 
see the whole situation, I can be depressed, I can be down with it, and uh, just say, you know, there's nothing good with life right now. I mean, people kill themselves over tragedy. Yeah. So it's really how you react to it. Now, I see it in a different way. I looked at everything that I went through. I said, okay, well, my wife is healthy. My kids are healthy. I was asleep during the fire upstairs, and I made it out, and I'm healthy. So, I mean, I can look at it as the material stuff and just be down and out. But I'm looking at what I do have. I still have my family. I st we still have one another, and we're still together. We might be living in a hotel right now, but we're taken care of. So, you know, it's really how you react to those tragedies. You know, that's one thing, and, and we talked about this last month when we came on the air. I think it was like the first thing that we talked about when we came on the air for, yeah, yeah. That, for that episode. And like I said then, and, and I'll say it again, like we, we watched the news clip, you know, and you were interviewed by the news, you know, outlet that was, uh, was covering the story. I gave, them, I gave them some ratings. Yeah, you did because <laughs> I, you know, and like Joe and I were were talking, and it's like even in the in in the face of this, this dude is on camera talking. There he you know there's a kind of a smile on his face, but your tone of voice, your presentation, I mean, it was still very uplifting, so motivational, so inspiring, and it's like how many other people could they have talked to? And they would have been a blubbering, you know, mess. Right. Now, and justifiably so. I'm not trying. You know, I'm not yeah. saying that. You know, don't show emotion because you've just lost all of your stuff in a house fire or anything like that. It's certainly not the case. But you nailed it right on the head. It's how do you react to this? Mm. Now, all depending on what kind of tragedy we're talking about. It could right. be like what you guys are going through, your, your, your loss of property, your loss of home, um, a real bad injury, especially if you're an athlete. If you are an athlete of, of any sort and you go down you know, with a blown out ACL or something like that, yeah. your career is in jeopardy, your season is certainly over, right. in their mind that is a tragedy. And I can understand that because that is a huge part of their life. Right, right. And when you take something like that away, it really it not only is a, a, a physical challenge, it now starts to become an, a mental challenge, you know, a, a psychological challenge. And I can re relate to this. Uh, my son uh, had to have his second knee surgery here this year within like three years. And it was a collision at first base. He's 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 a baseball player, and he had one of two options. They could have done a procedure that would have more or less put a band aid on it just to get him through the season. Right. But knowing he wasn't going to be at a hundred percent, not just you know physically, but in his mind, he's going to he's going to be nervous. He's not going to be yeah. as involved in 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 the plays as he once was. He opted for the actual operation to just repair the thing. And, right, right. And, at uh, 13 years old, that that is a testament of his mindset of what he wanted. In his mind, not being able to play baseball is a is indeed a tragedy. It's his whole life, much like any athlete, really. I mean, if you are a student of the game and you have put in all this time, all this effort into being. Uh, you know, a part of this sport, a part of this activity, then obviously it's going to affect every single aspect of your life. Oh, you yeah. take that away for anything. Right. Yep. You know, a couple of years ago, it was a pandemic, shut everything down. Yep. You know, and, and that was a whole nother layer of being PO'd at the world because yeah. you took away something that was fundamentally a huge part of their life. In, right. In the event of injury, uh, that's a that's a that's a whole different layer, right? Because yeah. it, it's a different part of the psychological process. Were you an athlete? Yeah, somewhat, somewhat. I mean, I didn't play sports in school, but I know a little bit about you know injuries that's kind of like take you out of what you want to do. Because right. <laughs> I mean, I, I had some dreams and aspirations, and uh, I know I had uh, different shoulder issues, and and now that I'm a fitness trainer. 
there's things that I wanted to do as a fitness trainer. And I have very, very bad arthritis in my knees. Really? A lot of people don't, don't even know because there's some type of, lim there's always something that's going to limit you that you're going to have to work around. So that's, that's me with my knees. So I have to work around that. But, you know, there's things that I wanted to do that I cannot do with that limitation. So just like these sports injuries, things happen, you have to learn how to work around it. Now, now I'm learning how to train around injuries. So uh, it's same thing in the sports industry. You, you got uh, these sports coaches that uh, try to help you get through each and every injury, uh, try to train around it. Therefore, you're not just giving up on your dreams because a lot of people give up once something like that happens. You know, you might have like a little boo-boo on your shoulder, on, on, your, on your elbow, and they give up. A lot of people give up from the first uh, hurdle, pretty much. So we have to, you know, just keep moving forward, you know, because you, every hurdle is not going to be that stopping point. It don't have to be that stopping point. I feel like that that's the reoccurring theme, not only of the show, you know, because we've talked about this in several ways here and with, with several topics is, you know, you're, it's a mindset. You got to move forward if right. you're going to get anywhere in life. And I, start. I don't care if it's personal or, or, or professional. If you want to get anywhere, you've got to get on the, on the right frame of mind. Because, yeah. you, you know, you're, yes, we have a body and yes, it will move the way we want it to. But it, I mean, there's something powering the, the machine, but I also feel like with that, it's not just the mind, it's not just the body, it's the heart, man. Yeah. And, you know, as somebody that has spent the majority of his life trying trying to improve how I felt about myself, mm -hmm. improve on things that I wanted to be, things that I wanted to, you know, to do, it is very much a mindset. Um, and there have been a lot of challenges along the way. Now, it could have been personal, it could have been professional. I spent 28 years as a promoter of a professional wrestling company. In that time, I was also an in-ring performer. Yeah. You know, so that's a lot of different hats. If we're right. gonna if we're gonna peel the curtain back a little bit, more often than not, I wrestled as two different gimmicks on the same show. Um, not a lot of people can do that for right. for the, for that amount of time. Um, it's a mindset, just like every other thing, any other level of growth or success or anything along those lines. If you are not in the right frame of mind. I'm starting to get heated about this because I, I can tell where this conversation is heading. Um, if you are not in the right frame of mind, you're not go you're not going to be who you want to be. You're not go you're not going to be where you want to be, and it's really it's got to start with the mind with, with the right mindset. I need to let you talk for for a second because. <laughs> I can tell where the, where this conversation is heading, and it's going to get <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, you know, we go left field sometimes, but uh, <laughs> it's all right. But 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 you're right, man. This it, it starts with the mind. I mean, the mind that's the government of your body. I mean, without your mind, you're a vegetable. Without your mind, you can't do anything. So, therefore, dedication to whatever your 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 uh, your dreams are comes from the mind. It's, it's, it's a mental state and you have to be um, intentional with it, you know, and that it all goes back to the mind. So even like when stuff happens, tragedies happen, I mean, you have to expect and be ready for when things happen. And that's, it's, preparation is very important and that's part of the mind. I mean, it all starts with that thought. You have to be intentional with being prepared for when things do happen. And it, because you're not going to make it if you're not prepared. Right. <laughs> That's when people want to give up because they're not prepared for when the tragedy happens. I mean, I'm expecting stuff to still happen. But I know that I'm strong enough to get through it. So that's that's where we have to be in life. And that's how I can handle each and everything. I mean, I didn't expect my house to catch on fire. I mean, I didn't expect that. But I did have insurance. Right. Just in case, <laughs> right? I had insurance. So 
that's important. You have to be prepared for every situation in life. It starts with the mind, man. Are you right. It right. Um, and along those lines, it's not just. It's not as as people try to overcome different tragedies. Not only does it come down to the having the as best of a mindset as you can possibly have when you're trying to navigate through all of this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also your surroundings. Yeah. It's also the people that you have around you during these times. Right, right. This kind of opportunity, this kind of scenario makes or breaks an individual who's already going through something. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Where it's some sort of loss, it's some sort, in their mind, some sort of tragedy. When we are in the midst of something like that, like I don't know about you, but I'm pretty s selective about who I want around me. Yeah. Like I have oh, a yeah. pretty um, intact inner circle. And if you are not within, if you're not one within that, that circle, you're not getting anywhere near um, the most personal part of me. Right, And right. when we are faced with tragedy, whether we want to or not, like, we are exposed, you know, from, as somebody that has spent the majority of his life kind of keeping emotions and my inner feelings on lockdown mm -hmm. because it had been used, you know, pretty viciously against me previously. So, I mean, that's a whole different sidebar. Yeah. But like it all, a lot of it is that support system that you have around yourself. Right, you, right. You need people, number one, that you can trust. You need people that you respect, that you genuinely like mm -hmm. as a person, not what they can bring to the table for you, but them as an individual. Those are, you know, I find those are the most meaningful of, of, of you know, friendships and relationships and things of this nature. Um, you need people that are going to support you because they want to support you, not because they're expecting s something in return. Right, or right. Yeah. That's an unspoken thing. If it's a if if it's a real relationship, if it's a real friendship, it's an it's an unspoken thing that this gets repaid when the time comes. You don't have to verbalize that because when you verbalize that, you've already you have now compromised the state, really, in my opinion, of the relationship itself. That's one less thing that you really need to be thinking about when you're when you are already in the midst of all of this other ill feelings and less than awesome situations that you're a part of, right? Absolutely. Like I always say that uh, my circle is so small that it looks like a dot. <laughs> <laughs> and I say because. Uh, you know, when tragedy happens, that's when you're most vulnerable. Right. You know, you got emotions are running high. Um, you have all these different kind of feelings. And if you got people that's going to prey on your <laughs> your emotions and everything that you're going through, then they're not the ones for you. So that's why it's always good to have a good support system. And you can't ha everybody cannot travel with you. Right. Everybody cannot be on the road with you. Everybody cannot be all in your face. And, and I mean, because stuff happens and you got to, people will bring you down. People will bring you down even during the tragedy because misery loves company. You might have somebody that's going through their own misery and they want to keep talking about the misery. They want to keep bringing it in your face and, oh, man, you, you went through this. I went through this, too. Now, I'm not about to trade sad stories back and forth. We're not playing catch with sad stories. No, this, this, it's, not, it's not a competition <laughs> no. at all. And I, that was, you were going to, that's a good segue to my next point is, you know, when you are selecting those people that are in your inner circle, the last ones that you really want are the ones that try to turn your stuff with them in the spotlight all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, when in the hell did this become your problem? Right, I right. mean, was this your house that you lost? Was this your knee that you blew out? Was this your relative, your friend that has passed away? Generally not, because, but at the same time, dude, I dealt with this. And it just, like, it blew my mind to the point to where I looked at this person in, in the face 
And I <laughs> legitimately said, are you real? Are you a real person? Like, who does that? Who tries to make mm. somebody else's misfortune into a catalyst for the spotlight to be on them? It ain't about you at that point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. That's the last person you need in your inner circle. And that's, yeah. that's the kind of crap that really, in, in my opinion, prolongs any type of healing process. Oh, man. Because you're just adding a different layer of ill feelings on top of everything else that's already on full display, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got an open wound and you're trying to heal and you got somebody in there scratching at it. It's not going to heal correctly. Or dumping, <laughs> the, you know, a thing of salt. Yeah, it's, it's not going to feel good. And, and really, it's up to you to get away from that person. So, I mean, I can say this and that about the people that's, that's in the circle that's uh, putting me down or, or, or trading sad stories with me or trying to pour salt in the wound. But if it's not, it's up to me <laughs> to get away from all of that negativity and all of that crazy talk and all of that other stuff. That's why I keep my circle small because you got to, really evaluate the people that's around you because you become who they are. Yeah. Because yeah, they, they feed off you and you feed off of them. So all that negativity, is it's, it's like a cancer and it just spreads, your whole circle is all jacked up now. And your mind is all jacked up because of the way people are around you. So keep, and, and I know, I, you know some people that I had to get rid of. Yeah. You, you know one specific person I had mm -hmm. to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the audience do too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Just, there's people that you cannot be around that always want to put the spotlight on them. I don't know if anybody uh, ever been on Zoom. If you are on Zoom, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with Zoom. <laughs> yeah, you got all you, you got all the people. We they had class. Uh, the schools had to do Zoom and all that stuff during the pandemic. We, sh we should all know about Zoom. Right. But uh, Zoom, you have all these different uh, panels. You got everybody on their camera. Every time, you know, everybody's unmuted. So as soon as you start talking, they put the spotlight on that person that's talking. Right. That's where we are in life right now. <laughs> people want that spotlight, so they start speaking louder. Speak into the mic. So they start yelling all into the mic. Just a bunch of nonsense. And people get excited with that because the camera's on them now. Now they feel like they got more to say. I got something to say. I have everybody's attention. <laughs> yeah. I am at I am front and center. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I get it. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Obviously, we we've touched on a couple different layers of, of different tragedies. Um what we're gonna this next one is obviously the big one. And this is the one that most people can relate to. So I wanted to dedicate the rest of, of the chunk of, of time that we have here on the air. And if any of our esteemed audience members has any questions or comments, they will have an opportunity towards the end of the show. Uh, and we will address that as well. Uh, so right now, let's run a quick timeout and we will be back with more of the Klaus and Q show right after this. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Hunt for treasures or sell a few of your own at Orient Township's Outdoor Garage Sale on Saturday, August 27th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Don't drag the kids from house to house wasting time and gas. The Community Garage Sale offers one-stop shopping in the parking lot of the Orient Center located on Joslin Road near Clarkston Road. Parking and admission is free. To reserve a space or for more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, 
<laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you for that. I needed that. That was good. Welcome back to the Klaus and Q show here on ON TV. We are live from Lake Orion, Michigan, the ON TV studio. We do have members of the audience that have joined us here tonight. We certainly appreciate them and we appreciate you for, for tuning in and giving us a watch. Uh, here tonight we're talking about moving forward after tragedy and we kind of touched on in the first half of the show here a couple of different layers of tragedy you know a lot of it is personalized just based on how it affects your individual life your existence and what's important to you may not be as monumental to somebody else but it's important nonetheless Q, you and I talked about it, um, you know, a lot of, as we move forward to trying to heal from these different things, it's, you know, a lot of it is mindset. And then right before the break, we talked about how important having the right in, inner circle is. Yep. Um, now, there is an aspect of tragedy that um, everybody deals with, you know, at, at one point or another, some more than others. Uh, it is the unfortunate part of life, and that is, of course, losing a loved one, or, you know, a family member, a friend, uh, one somebody that you hold near and dear passes away. Um, never a good scenario, never a good situation. Uh, this is one of those things, Q, like when we, when we decided that we were going to talk about this topic, like, for you, like I said, you know, you are experiencing firsthand a version of a tragedy with losing your home. That's what you brought to to the table. I can bring, I can very much bring to the table here tonight the aspect of losing a loved one and just how how that changes everything. And it's it is nothing short of a tragedy. And like a like for me it completely changed who I am as an individual. And, you know, before we, you know, kind of do a deep dive into all that, because I feel like that this is where, where this is heading, let me just say that it, it doesn't matter what kind of tragedy that you're going through, no matter what the level is, no matter what's happening even in in in, in the darkest of hours and in, in the most you know dire of moments where things seem absolutely hopeless just know that they're not it seems like it it seems like it would be easier just to to turn the switch off but i can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that the sun rises on the next day and the next day after that and the next day after that and while things may not be ideal and things may never be the way that they once were, that doesn't mean you're not going to experience some degree of joy and happiness in your life moving forward. It just comes in a different form with a different person, with a different situation. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. You know, I can relate to, uh, to that, and especially like, and I believe that this is definitely going to resonate with uh, a lot of people out there because... Uh, we all went through 2020. If you're still alive, you went through 2020. And uh, people are still dealing with that pandemic. And, you know, for me, uh, in September, it'll be the uh, 20 year anniversary of my mom passing away. So we all have dealt with this. And, you know, it's, it's things that you gotta, it's, it's things that you just can't avoid, but there's things that you have to get through. Was it something where you guys knew it was coming? Was it COVID related? What, uh, what had she been sick? I yeah, mean, she, uh, well, it wasn't COVID related. Okay. <laughs> but uh, she, uh, she, she had lung cancer. Yep, she had lung cancer. So, uh, and, it, and, and it, was, it was very, very quick. And I remember, uh, uh, now, and I think I told the story a little bit on, on the Klaus and Q, sh or the Klaus to the Heart show uh, the, when I was on there. She had a pain, and, and this is how quick things just just went sideways. Like she had a pain in her shoulder. She had, she had a shoulder pain. When they got an x-ray, there was uh, nothing shown. Then she had pneumonia. 
then she had cancer. And then a month later, we're burying her. I mean, it happened so fast. And me, I'm, <laughs> I'm fresh into my senior year of high school. So there's times that I had to leave school and I'm driving at the time. It was just me and her. My uh, sister was in college. My brother was, uh, it was old. He was, go he was gone, gone off somewhere. Uh, but it was just me and her. So I was pretty much taking care of her the entire time. So I would leave school, go and, uh, you know, make sure she was okay, go back to school or go up to the hospital. She was in and out of the hospital. It was a lot, man. Taking her to the, to the chemo therapy. I did a whole, and I feel like, and just like you were saying, uh, how it changes you. And I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't think I would be who I am today if I didn't have to go through that experience because it grew me up real fast. Sure. Because sophomore year, I was a turd. I was bad. I was crazy. Senior year, totally flip flop. It's, it's ironic. Um, so it took something like this tragedy to put you on a, on a path Yep. that has led you to where you are mm -hmm. here and now. Launching pad. That yeah. was a launching pad right there. Had that not happened, when it happened, mm -hmm. chances are pretty good you, you wouldn't be where you are right now, right? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would have met none of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, but I mean, like life in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Tragedy has a way of shifting things, you know, uh, and I believe that was like the shift in my life in 2002, right there in September when, uh, you know, I'm holding her, her lifeless body. I was holding her lifeless body and trying to keep composure. I kept composure and I was actually the one keeping the family together. I had to calm, I was calming people down. At that, at that point in time, I felt like, I felt the growth. You know, I felt like, you know, I got to do something to really uh, keep her legacy going. I got to do something to keep the family legacy going because tragedy can either break the whole family down or it can build it up even better because you have a foundation. And a pretty strong one, too. Like, as you're, as you're laying this out, I'm running through my head um, a variety of different parallels here. Um, in terms of trying to keep everything together, you know, when everything really in reality just wants to <laughs> fall apart. All right, right, right. You know, it, it comes down to one or two or three people to really hold, hold everything together at that point. A lot right. of times it comes down to one, right? Right. I get this wholeheartedly. Um, you know, in a span of a, less than a handful of years, like we, we lost my mom and like she had been sick for a while, but the downfall that led to everything ultimately happening was very quick. Um, like to the point to where I was like, it, it, it took me off guard because I was getting to a point to where I was trying to prepare myself for when that day was coming. Right, yeah. You can have all the preparations in the world <laughs> and think that you have it all figured out. I'm mm -hmm. an overthinker, so self-admittedly, to yeah. almost to a fault. Like I try to prepare for everything. I try to think of everything. I try to think of every scenario, every feeling, every emotion. It doesn't matter. I can relate to that. When it happens, it 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 will conjure up different feelings inside of you that you didn't even know existed. Mm, yeah. Um, Practice is not the same as the real game. <laughs> right, right, for sure. I mean, you have, you're not going to completely collapse, but you're still rattled. You're still, yep. like, up against the ropes. Like, oh, man, I'm, I'm dizzy right now. I, I mm -hmm. can't see straight. Nothing feels right. Um, the, the matriarch of the family, right? Like, mm -hmm. my mom, I'm sure your mom was, was much like this. Like, she, she took care of just about everything. Yeah, she um, did. and when when she passed, like like she spent forty plus years taking care of my dad and taking care of my brother and taking care of me. Um, I was a lot more kind of independent on I, 
you know, at, at that point, but like she took care of everything, man. And I, I remember making or acknowledging the, the situation to where this falls on me now. Mm -hmm. Like my brother is a mess. My dad is broken. I mean, I'm sad, I'm bummed, but I'm in defense mode now. Right, right. And this is how I'm having this is how I'm having to deal with this. I'm now kind of assuming this role, right? Um so I made sure that we tried to do as much of the traditional things and we've talked about this on on previous shows making her, you know, the dinner that she would make for the holidays and things of this nature just you know, to make things as somewhat normal as I possibly could right? in a very unnormal situation. I'm not telling you anything, obviously. Um, but you want to talk about change. Uh, like, I am still very much dealing with the ramifications of, in, in my world, in my life, is the greatest tragedy of them all. And that was you know, losing my brother in, ironically enough, 2020. Um, there are days, Q, I wake up and I still don't think it's real. There yeah, are, yeah. The other day, I I kid you not, I can show you my call log. I picked up my phone, like I woke up and I picked up my phone because I had a thought and it was baseball related. And I picked up my phone and I hit, I still have my brother's number in here. I hit my brother's number. Like I, like I was calling him. And like that hasn't happened in a while, mm -hmm. uh, but it did. And I'm just like, damn, you know? Like right, it's, right. It, it, it is this. A lot of people who lose somebody on that level, they will um, they will allow that to completely break them and drive them into an early grave. Yeah. At the time when I heard things like this, I didn't understand that mentality. You know. Right. Right. Um, it's one of those things where you're just like, what goes into a person's mind where they think that it's just it's it's a better option to just not be here, not deal with it to just turn the lights on. Right. Yeah. I understood that. Um, I there was times where I very much felt abandoned, you know, mm -hmm. because Not only was I supposed to carry the load, like, again, I found myself in, in a situation where I had to hold pe people together. Right, right. My sister-in-law was destroyed. My dad, just a couple of years after losing his wife, you know, he's lost his son. That's heavy. Um, this is something that changed me fundamentally as a person and it has set me on a course that I knew was going to create a great deal of controversy. It was going to shift people's opinion of me in the way that I moved forward in the wake of tragedy. It was on that day that I realized in my mind what uh, what life's all about and how precious it is. And that um, even when things feel as broken and as empty and as, heartbro as heartbreaking as it can and oftentimes is, um, that sun always shines the mm -hmm. next day. You know, you gotta believe that. You know, and again, like the, I'm telling myself that because there was that time, like I can't do this. Right. I right. don't want to do this. Very selfish of me, but I was. I haven't fully mourned my mom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I haven't had that big breakdown with 
I mean, I think I came pretty close to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that has not happened with Jeff. I have not, I have not had that release yet, and I want it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. But I don't want it in the <laughs> most inopportune time. Right, right. I don't want it in front of the kids. I, I just assume be somewhere in the middle of nowhere so I'm not burdening anybody. And that's, exactly, that, yeah. that's a big thing because we talked about our inner circle. My inner circle was on full display when, when that happened. Two of them are sitting right to my immediate left here. It took those kind of people for me to realize, okay, snap out of it. This is bad, yes, it's not the end of the world. And it takes people like that um, to put that in perspective, to remind you. Yeah. Because make absolute no mistake about it, I, in, dealing, in dealing with Jeff's loss, there have been the people in my inner circle that are amazing, that have really been there, truly been there without expectations. And then there's a, the, those other ones that we talked about earlier in the program about how they try to latch their name into the situation so they, in their minds, feel relevant. Now, I could go on a very R-rated sidebar, but because this is indeed on, t on, uh, on cable TV tonight, we better not go down that route. We'll <laughs> save that for the podcast. Um, is there anything you want to add to this? Because yeah. I feel like I've just been <laughs> rambling for the last, for, you know, forever. Going back to that uh, support, you know, if I'm on the ground, I want somebody that's going to be willing to lift their, you know, send their hand out there and pull me up, not to talk to me, telling me why I'm on the ground. I mean, I know why I'm on the ground. I want somebody that can lift me up off the ground. And, that, and that's very important. And just like you were saying, uh, carrying that load even after, you know, something like that happens and you have to be able to mourn properly and that sometimes turns into uh, almost like a cancer inside you because a lot of people give up because they do not know how to mourn they do not know how to properly mourn you know because your emotions are going to be high because you cannot avoid the emotions and I know for me the emotions can trigger just like that and I know there was a specific song that uh, used to play that actually played the day after uh, I think it was the day of my mom's death and I came home after all of that and I'm and, and, and this it's crazy because uh, the experience of just being in that hospital as they were uh, bringing out the body bag. And uh, I mean, these are things that you don't even think of, but after coming home after all of that, experiencing all that, and I turned on the TV and there was a song on, and, and uh, I can't even remember the name. It was a song by LL Cool J, for, for all people. <laughs> <laughs> it was a song by LL Cool J, but it was one of the love songs that he had at the time. And, uh, uh, and it, one of the lyrics was, uh, smile today it was smile today so every time i heard that song after that it triggered the emotion that i had being in that hospital watching that body bag come into that room it, it triggered it every time so you know and, and and that's those are things that you know we deal with as a people because we're all human i mean uh, there's no robots in here there's no androids in here shouldn't be I mean we're all we all bleed we all put our pants on the same way one leg at a time I mean we go through these emotional situations and we have to be able to mourn properly because it, we're, we're never gonna get over it and it's it, it sounds harsh when you say get over that death get over that situation it's, it sounds harsh right but that's actually part of moving 
forward in your life because if I was able to talk to my mom today, she would tell me the same thing. She would say, you know what, get up and go. Get up and move. I don't want to be the one that causes you to be down and out and give up. She won't, she wouldn't want that. Right. And just like and, and all of us that, that lost somebody, I, I'm sure they would not want us to give up because what happened to them. Right. That's where we have to pick ourselves up. We have to pick ourselves up, surround ourselves with people that will help us up and move forward. It's not easy, but it's some, that's part of life. And I guarantee you, everybody that's dealing with 2020 still can't get over 2020. That's going to be hard and it's going to take time. There's no time frame for it. But it's something that has to be done. Right. You know, so. I think, um, you know, the one thing is, and I was, as you were laying this out, I, I was thinking about, you know, the things that you've gone through, the things that I've gone through back then, how things were back then and where they are now. And I feel like that's kind of the moral of the story here tonight is moving forward after a tragedy, um, it ultimately comes down to you and how much you're willing to put into that recovery process. You made a very good point you know, a couple of minutes ago about mourning properly, um, which I, I totally get, I totally get. But I also feel like along those lines, like that is an individual thing too, because there are people that mourn immediately. And it's a long-term thing. It almost becomes a thing where that becomes their identity. And I certainly, you know, that's unfortunate. But um, with the right mindset, with the right, you know, inner circle, it can almost motivate you to improve something with you because you realize in the wake of all of that happening how precious life truly is. Our our tomorrows are never guaranteed and we've got one life to live. Yeah. And what are you going to do with that life? Who do you want to be in this life? What do you want to be in this life? Now, I can tell you and anybody that's followed my story, (laughs) as controversial as it is at times, that's on you. I don't really care. Um, I'm not the same person now that I was two years ago. Uh, I have totally reshifted and refocused my entire existence. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like it's something that, well, number one, was long overdue, and number two, had to happen because I've got one life to live. Yeah. And it was you talked about describing the scene of of the of the body bag thing. Like I have a similar visual. Um, your situation in that environment, mine, completely different. The venues were even different. You were at a hospital. I was in my brother's living room. Um, so, like, you described that, how that unfolded. I have one that's burned in my brain, and I've only gone into great detail about what I saw how I, and how I felt about it with one other individual because it's on that deep level. You know, but you can get past, you can overcome, you can rebound. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be the way that, that it once was. It just isn't. But that doesn't mean it has to be the forever stamp of how you live your life. Yes, it is an unfortunate chapter of your life, but it doesn't have to be the whole story. Right, right. right. Yeah, I agree. And then also remember, uh, you have people connected to you. And uh, especially now that we're in this, we're in a public setting, uh, you know, so there's people that's probably watching us and saying, you know, I want to be like them. I want to be, you know, kind of 
kind of follow their example on things. So, and even on a personal level for me, I have five kids at home. And imagine if I don't get through the tragedy. What, what you don't get through affects the people that's following you. Right. Because they're watching you. So we have people watching us right now. If I don't make it through, then they're like, well, if he can't make it, how am I going to make it? Right. And, you know, and that's how my kids look at me. Because your kid, being a dad, I'm super dad. I don't know if anybody else wearing that super dad cape. <laughs> <laughs> but I wear my super dad cape every day. Every day. I'm a proud super dad. My nine-year-old, he calls me super dad. <laughs> he calls me super dad. So it, pe you got people watching you. You have your kids watching you. You have a following. So that's why your, your, your success, uh, you're helping the next generation. You're helping other people right. that way. Um. We do have a podium set up here in the studio. Um, if any of our audience members wants to uh, ask a question or a comment or anything of that nature, it is open and available. Um, real quick though, I want to mention this is my cheap plug for the week. Uh, we're just a couple of weeks away. Um, I'm going to be in Oxford, Michigan at the Legacy Center, the 925 Bar and Kitchen Event Center inside there. Klaus to the Heart Live is going down uh, September the 9th, 8 p.m. Tickets are available um, at the door for $10. They're now available online, too, Q. Oh, man. We, yeah, yep. Um, you'll have to go to the Klaus to the Heart Facebook page to find the <laughs> link because I didn't write it down. Um, so I know we kind of got a little deep with, 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 with this topic. Um, but I think that this is something that people need, they need to talk about every once in a while. Do you, oh, absolutely. Do you know, burying feelings is the absolute worst thing you can do. Especially I, as guys. Well, for, right. Oh, right. man, guys do not like to talk about this kind of stuff. No, but it's important because guys, especially guys, like, they have emotions too. Yeah. And if they don't, if they don't find a way to express that man it creates inner turmoil that it ultimately bubbles up and becomes a part of their outward persona right that's right yeah that's right well I, we i believe we have we have a guest we have a a question or a comment i don't think this thing's really on no, it's oh on. look at there's me <laughs> uh first i'll do a comment you guys are awesome Hope you guys both know that you guys are definitely in my inner circle. But also, that's kind of what I wanted to base this question off of, because you guys both talked about it and about either keeping a small circle or, in Q's case, just a dot. Um, that's not, because I, I totally agree, that's not really necessary out of a choice, but it's kind of out of not finding enough people of value to keep in your inner circle. Oh, man, so good. I'm kind of curious on... Why do you guys believe that is in nowadays? I don't know if it really was a difference in the past. Maybe values were different then, it. which it could be, but it doesn't seem like that's the case nowadays. It seems it's very hard to find people that motivate, inspire, and are just willing to be there for each other. It's almost like they want to pull each other down or yeah. even like, boom, there's a reason why you're not as good as you think you are, and they point that out. You know what, I believe, uh, and, and you kind of hit it, hit it with the uh, whole value system. The generations are going down. That's, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to say it, that the generations are not as strong as they used to be, like way back when our grandfathers, great-grandfathers, their times. It's a, lot of, it's a lot different now. So we have social media now, so people are more in tune to image instead of trying to help somebody else. You know, even if you have somebody that's willing to help you, they want to do it for likes, they want to do it for comments, they want to do it for attention. This is the society that we are currently dealing with. It's a Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, this, that, and the other. It's more, it's, it's more about the image now. I feel like uh, people are more in tune with their image and how they look and how strong they, you meet some of these people that's on TikTok, 
they're not the same when you meet them in real life. When you meet people on Facebook, I always say it, social media, that's the mask. They put social media on like a mask and they try to build up their image and it's not about helping people, it's about helping themselves look good. You know, yeah, I, you nailed all, all the points that I was going to say. It's a lot of this does come down to social media and it has, I, I have been very critical about so, social media. Like it's, it has good aspects and it. it has bad aspects in it. Um, the bad obviously is a lot of what you're laying out here and it gives these people an opportunity to be a per, like a gimmick, a persona because they're trying to improve on something that they see as a shortcoming like they don't give themselves a chance to be good people or to be you know to be seen as valuable because that's what social media is in a lot of cases they they go on there because they want to feel like they're important they want to feel like that there's something they want to feel like they're that they're a part of something and if they don't feel like they're getting enough attention, likes, comments, shares, what, whatever, if they're not going viral, um, you know, that, then in their mind they're failing at some point and they have to embellish that so that in their mind they feel like th that they're worthy. It doesn't have, it, like we didn't have this crap when we were kids. We've talked about this at great length. You know, the, the foundation of long-term you know, friendships and relationships and things of this nature came down to values and, and who we are individually as people, yep. not as personas. And like yeah, I, I can throw 90% of what he asked or what he said into the, this is a so, social media's part. And we have a couple of minutes here before we go off the air. We certainly appreciate um, your your question, sir, and uh, we will be back here next month, Q, I believe the 16th of September, 8 p.m., um, live here on ON TV. It was great having a studio audience here, so we thank you guys for being here. Anything else you want to say real quick? Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. The sun always rises on the next on the next day go out this week and this month be awesome to yourselves and to each other we'll see you right back here next month live on the klaus and q show on on tv stay motivated